As we continue to look at our passage, Paul gives a strong warning. Let no one pass judgment on you in question of food and drink. We need to be on guard against those who judge us. It's a, it's a, it's a warning to say, be careful of those who are trying to overwhelm you with guilt because you do not do these other practices. We do not need to follow these practices for righteousness' sake. We need to trust in Christ for our righteousness. Now, as we look at this, any program for spirituality that does not have Christ as its beginning, middle, and end is not a Christian program for spirituality. If there's anything we ever need to say, we need to add Christ in this particular, we need to add to Christ in this particular way, it's not true Christian spirituality. It's so easy to try to figure out a way to get a, 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 an easy loophole. We can be more spiritual if we just do this. No, we become spiritual by trusting in Christ completely. Now, I am a very strong advocate of regular church attendance and church membership. Am I adding, am I judging in a way that Paul would condemn here? I don't think so, obviously, or else I wouldn't do it. Because we're supposed to experience the head. And the way you experience the head is in his body. We are supposed to gather because the author of Hebrews says, do not forsake the gathering. It's clear prescription in Scripture. We're supposed to come together. If we are not present with one another, we cannot grow with one another. So you don't just come to church to get what you can get out of it. We should come to church realizing that other people need to experience Christ in us. When you're not here, it's not just a head missing. No, you're keeping us from experiencing what Christ is doing and has done and can do in your life. Regular attendance is important because we have to get to know one another. We need to learn how to love one another. See, it's only dangerous. Church membership and church attendance is only dangerous when Christ isn't at the forefront, when the gospel isn't central to everything we do. If this is a social organization where you just come and you, you feel welcome, if this is your equivalent of cheers, yeah, you're, you're adding something to Christ or you're, you're neglecting Christ altogether. Now, we come here not because people know us by name, but because we know Christ in one another and we're experiencing Christ in one another. If you're not a Christian this morning, we've been talking about rules and regulations and how to find peace and acceptance with God. I want to ask you a question. Why do you think God will accept you? Or maybe, do you think God will accept you? What do you count as your righteousness? Why do you think when you face God that he will or will not accept you? You see, we all have to ask this question. If you never asked that question, please ask it now. Why would God accept you? Now, maybe you can have a, a long resume. I have done this many charities. I've given this much money to charities. I've done all this work. I've been nice to people. I've been a helpful person. I've never intentionally hurt anyone. Now, that makes you a good person in, in, in the, the, the worldly sense, in the sense of what we would consider a good person. But it's not a good person according to God's standards. See, in order to be good according to God's standards, one not only has to be nice to other people, one must submit to God himself. He is our creator. He deserves our allegiance. Our allegiance should be to him, we must submit to him and obey him. It's not just about being nice to other people. It's about loving the Lord your God with all your heart. And if we have not loved the Lord our God with all our heart, we will not be accepted because God is holy and just. He will punish us for our sin. He will judge us justly for our sin. This leaves us with nothing but death. This leaves us nothing but judgment. When we ask ourselves, why would God accept me according to God's standards? He won't. 
Now, we're all Christians gathering here. If you're not a Christian, you're, we, we, we we're glad you're here. But one of the things you have to realize about us is that we don't come together because we think we've got it all together. We come together because we actually recognize our weakness. We recognize, we recognize our failure. We recognize our sin. And we're all coming together because we've recognized the one man, God himself, who became a man, who takes away our sin, who heals our weakness, who fixes our infirmities. You see, Jesus Christ is God himself, and he came down to live a life that we were meant to live. He was a human being who was perfectly innocent and perfectly righteous and just in everything he did. But yet he still died. He died on a cross, and the great punishment on that cross wasn't the nails going in his hand. It was actually when God the Father poured out the wrath for all of our sin upon him. Why would he do that? You see, when I believed in Christ, all the wrath that was due me for all of my sin, for all of my rejection of God and his authority over me, all the wrath that was due to me was poured out upon Christ. He was just. My sin was punished, not in me, but in Christ. And then when I believe in Christ, not only is my sin punished in him, but then his righteousness is counted towards me. I am now considered a son of God because I believed in Christ. See, being a Christian isn't about being a good person. Being a Christian is actually recognizing that we are sinful people. We are selfish people. And God alone has sent the one good person, Jesus Christ, and he has died on our behalf. The innocent one has taken upon himself God's wrath. He has taken upon himself our death so that we might live. So I ask you again, will God accept you? What are you trusting in to think God will accept you for? Friends, if it's anything other than Christ, he's not going to accept you. Our sin is too gross. Our sin is too offensive. Our sin is too rebellious against God. It's in Christ alone that our sins are forgiven and that he accepts us into his home. If you're not a Christian this morning, I would love to talk more about that with you after the service or any time.